Welcome to the Numar Supreme Air 2024. And this is the floor plan of a 4530. So we're gonna come up in the driver's seat here and we're gonna go through all of the controls uh, for the cockpit area, uh, starting on the driver's side. Um, obviously you have your uh, manual door lock here. And moving forward, you've got your window controls for up and down power windows. You can lock the power windows here. And then just in front of that, you have your mirror heat. Um, when you have your key on, you can see there's a small LED light that illuminates when you turn your mirror heat on. Uh, you have your mirror adjust here, left and right, and then you just toggle the mirror to the adjustment that you want with this control here. You have your uh, exterior lights. The A is for automatic. Uh, zero is off. These are your marker lights and then your headlights. Once the headlights are turned on, you can dim the lights here on the control for bright and dim is here. And then of course your turn signal left and turn signal right. If you'll notice when I turn the signal on to the right or left, my camera mirror goes to that side. So right turn signal will go to the right hand mirror so I can see traffic in the right turn lane and left does the same thing. It goes to the left side of the coach. On the same handle, the control for the wiper and speeds are here. If I want the wash, I just press this way and uh, the wiper wash will come on. Just below that, you'll see there is a house battery boost. So the battery banks for the house and the chassis can be connected together to boost the engine starting just by pressing this engine boost button and holding it down for 60 seconds. Obviously below that is our ignition key and I have it turned on to the accessories right now. Just above that you have your louver for your uh, air conditioning and heat in the cab area. This cluster of instruments uh, is called the instrumentation cluster unit in your operator's manual. And to scroll to the different controls in the center here, if you go left, you can see you're moving the icon to each one of the selections, settings, engine maintenance, and these are your wheel locks. So just to uh, give you an example here, if you were going to lock your axles, uh, let's say in slippery conditions, uh, you would go to this. And when you make a selection for locking your axles here, you'll see that if I press that inter-axle lock, it shows those all four axles are locked. If I want to just lock the front axle wheels, then it'll show that those are locked for the front axle. Anytime you're in any one of these screens and you make a selection, you can always go back just by pressing the back button. But once you're in like say the home screen, uh, you can scroll up and down and make selections in that, then you go right. You can also scroll up and down in those windows. Just to the right side of the selection for um, the home screen or other options, you've got the volume control for your radio here up and down. Obviously, you've got your horn here this is your street horn. 
if you want to activate your air horn that's up here and you pull this cord here and that's the loud air horn for outside. Just to the left of the main window, you've got your RPMs, oil pressure, fuel gauge. This is your speedometer here on the right, um, shows marker light indicator. You've got your air pressures, primary and secondary air indicators, and your uh, engine temperature is here. Moving up to the right side of the wheel, you can see you've got your telephone making a call or hanging up, um, your cruise control. Uh, once you uh, set your cruise control um, or have it set, you press the center one to cancel it. Um, there are two small light indicators here. If you just wanted to flash your headlights, you could just press that. You can see they flashed. Or if you wanted to flash your marker lights, you can do that here as well. So that's your cruise control here, flashing light markers here or headlights, and then cancel cruise there, telephone calls here. And then you can see here, uh, it, it just goes to the cruise control uh, setting. To the right and below that, you have your shift. Uh, right now we're in neutral. There's drive, neutral, and reverse. But you also have your air brake setting here. You can see that there's uh, low, medium, and high for your air brake. And that's for when you're in traffic um, or going down a hill, you can set your air brake settings to different levels uh, depending on how much braking assistance you need. Uh, it uses the engine exhaust as a type of air brake. Just to the right of that, you have your trailer air supply and your parking brake. Both of these need to be disengaged in order to move the coach after you're in drive. Um, you have to pull to apply the parking brake and pull uh, to evacuate the air supply for your trailer um, air here. To adjust the steering wheel, there's another lever here. Okay, so I can, I can now move the wheel. I can telescope it in and out. Once I get it set where I like, then I just push this back up and that locks it into place. We have our uh, hazard indicators here, on and off. Um, here we have just a, uh, a light um, for your pedal and foot area. This control is your lane departure warning. If you want your lane departure warning turned off, which deactivates the vibration warning when you're changing lanes. You can press that off and the red light comes on so your lane departure is off and it will stay off for 15 minutes. After that, it comes back on automatically. So to keep uh, every 15 minutes, if you wanna keep your lane departure warning, you would have to turn that off again not to have lane departure warning. Moving over to this cluster, the shade up and down. You can stop at any position and continue or shade down to retract it. You have your docking light on and off. You have your cab ceiling lights on and off. And your courtesy lights. Uh, the cluster over here on the bottom, 
is your uh, traction control. You can see traction control deactivated there, or if I press it again, it's back on. So just beside your traction control is your shutdown override. In other words, if your engine is derated and you're losing power, you can press this button and it will go back into a uh, timing sequence where your engine will have power again before it starts to derate the power. So that's what that button is for. My generator start and stop is here. If I want to start the generator, I just press and hold the generator start button. And that will start the generator. The antenna warning light will come on if your wine guard has not been stowed and you release the parking brake. This will illuminate red and you'll hear an audible warning sound. It will go into automatic stow as long as you're, either your inverter's turned on or you're plugged into shore power. Uh, the cluster over here, option A, option 1A, and option 1B. This instrument cluster is just for the cab area for your heating and cooling. Uh, obviously, this is your fan control for speeds of the fan. And the higher you go, the, the higher the number, uh, the more airflow you'll have, whether it's uh, at the mid uh, louvers vents or um, turning it to the defrost here. Um, these are the locations that it will um, move the air to. Uh, when you have uh, the setting over on the left here, um, those are for cooling. When you have these settings over in the white area, that is for the heat. So if you're going to be doing air conditioning, Obviously, you want to have the temperature control turned for the cooling over here and uh, the position you can change here uh, for your AC cooling. There's also a button that you need to press here. An LED light will come on um, to indicate that the uh, compressor is running. Um, but you have to have this turned on and then um, the engine would have to be on and you'll see an LED light that comes on there. If you're just running heat and not cooling, you'd want to turn these over to here for the heat and you'd want to turn these over to the warmer uh, temp over here for the defrost, for instance. Um, you want to have that over to the right. Those are pretty self-explanatory, but you can refer to your manual for more information on those. Just, uh, well, let's start here at this radio control. Um, um, you have a menu here. Um, in the menu, you have your radio, your media center. Back to menu, you have your Sirius XM, your Bluetooth, your HDMI, auxiliary, and cameras. Uh, from our camera selection, you can scroll left or right or rear or split camera for both sides or if you want a full view around your coach you can get that your nav menu you have to accept and then once you're in the navigation menu you have um, a choice of new route, multi-point, traffic, and useful information. You can scroll between those um, choices. There is a screen dimmer if you wanted to dim your screen down a little bit. Um, and of course then you'll have your favorite screen here um, that you've already made selections for your favorites. Uh, when you're done or you just want to power down that screen, just press and hold that button that powers it down. If you wanted to use the speaker, uh, that control is here. So you can connect to this uh, via Bluetooth. 
and your phone selection here. Uh, you can pair your phone to this. Uh, you have USB outlets for charging here or connecting to your phone. And of course, to the right of that, you've got your louver and your lock and unlock for your doors and your window control. You'll see there is a, a catch here all the way across the front windshield and there's uh, connecting pins here so you can put your shade for the front windshield. We're gonna show you how to install that right now. So you take your snap and you line up your snaps with the side that you wanna start with and you just push them in and they lock. And then you have these little catches. You just put those in the bar and you work your way across. There's one for each about one foot section. And you move your way over. And finish our installation on this side. And that gives us privacy and shade. There's additional storage compartments up here. There's a speaker in this one. And you have This is your uh, Excite radio core and your connection for your uh, CAN bus tool. More storage. There is a uh, owner support telephone number here, 800. If you had any issues with your coach and you wanted to talk directly to your uh, customer support, um, that person is uh, listed here and the toll-free number is right below it. The seat operation for both the driver and the passenger seat is manual. And there's a bar in the front. As soon as you pull up on that, you can move the seat forward and back. The armrests on both sides are adjustable. There is a adjustment rotor here. So once you have the arm in the position you would like to keep it from going any further down, just rotate that bar and that keeps it from going down any further. You can always lift it up without turning that wheel. The same for the driver's seat, the adjustment. Uh, there is a seat back adjustment here when you can, you can pull this lever and move your seat back adjustment on both driver and passenger seat. Uh, there's the same bar on the front of this if you lift the bar up, you can push your seat forward and back. So to finish uh, our seat adjustment for driver and passenger side, you'll notice that there is an air ride under the seat. So that air ride can be adjusted up and down for less or more uh, suspension. If you want to just lock the seat into that position, you can just lock it in this position and that keeps it from moving. To unlock it, so you have the air ride, you want to have the gray uh, handle up. This is just for your heat in the seat. 
low or high. This is your lumbar support here, so you can adjust your lumbar. And again, that's just for the air ride adjustment here. Starting here in the living room area, uh, you've got a, a day stand here. On the back wall, you've got a 120 volt plug along with USB plugs for charging. Above the outlet, we have a touch screen uh, for our lighting, kitchen lights, overhead lights, accent lights, wall lights, and courtesy lights. If you don't understand how to operate those, you can go in here to the menu and then um, you can actually press the I for lighting. The I means information and then you can uh, you can actually go through the tutorial on how to operate any one of those functions. Just above that, we have additional storage. Uh, we have the Bose soundbar. Just below that, we have the AV or audiovisual cabinet. Audiovisual cabinet is where you would put your satellite receiver. Um, if you have a DVD player, uh, obviously that would be something you want to put in here. Uh, the plug-in, the 120 volt plugs to power those up are here. And we have the cables already labeled, one for Blu-ray and that the other one is for satellite. There's additional storage here. Our TV lift is there to operate the TV lift. Uh, to go up, you can do that right here from the touchpad. Go in here to systems, and then you'll have water pump, TV lift up, and TV lift down. So if we press our TV lift up, and while that's going up, I'll get the remote control and we'll go through that. So as long as our inverter is on or we're plugged into shore power, um, we'll be able to turn the television on. So if you're going to operate your TV on air, you'd want to turn your WineGuard antenna on or power it up. It'll do an automatic search and find channels for you. As long as this is on, you won't be able to use the park cable. So if you're, if you're wanting to watch cable, you want to make sure this one's turned off and that way it won't be searching for air channels. It'll be looking at the TV through the cable and that way you'll be able to watch cable. So to do a search on uh, the channels, that would be this button here does the search and you can make adjustments left or right to fine tune the channel once it's locked in. But again, Turn this off if you're going to watch park cable. The park cable is connected back in the cord reel compartment. <clears throat> With your coach, you've got your, your Samsung controller. We can turn that on. Once the TV gets up, we can, uh, we can see now it's connected to Blu-ray. When you initially get your TV, you'll have to set your TV up uh, for what you want to watch uh, and the source that you want to use uh, to receive signals. So uh, to get to uh, those settings you would want to go to the, uh, the, home, the home page which is in the center of your control. So you press that one that shows the house and now you have the choice. Uh, you can select live TV, Blu-ray, here, if I go here, I can also select apps. I can search, choose a source, or go into the settings. So um, if I want to watch live TV, for instance, I'm going to have to find the live TV And then I'm going to have to choose 
uh, to scan that network so that those channels will show up. Now, as we talked about earlier in the overhead above the driver's seat, uh, there's an antenna. It's called WineGuard. So if I would go over to WineGuard, turn that on, that's going to turn on the receiver for my television air channels. After I've got that on, I want to select Live TV Air here. Once I do that, I'll be able to scan for the channels. Um, there are two controls. Uh, right now, the TV uh, is going through the Bose speaker, uh, and you would have to turn that up or down or uh, silent off here. Uh, but again, this TV has already uh, gone through the scan process, so it found a channel uh, here to view. Uh, changing the channel view is here. Wherever you are going to relocate your coach for camping, you're going to have to rescan your channels uh, going back in to the air channels here and going through the scan mode. So to do that, uh, we press house. We'll have to go to settings and then we'll do our scan and settings. Broadcasting. Once we go to broadcasting, we select that. We can go auto program. Press start to search and store channels. So this is what you'll have to do each time you relocate so that you can get your air channels uh, to store and then you'll be able to view them. So once I click on that to start, once you're at this screen setting to scan channels, since the receiver for the air is not the same as the cable, you have to have the air one off if you're gonna watch cable, you're not going to be able to scan both at the same time. So you're going to have to either choose air or cable to scan. You cannot do both. So we're going to scan our air channels here and it should show a, a green line that goes across and when it's 100% done um, it'll show you the channels that you've got available. So here we found 40 channels. Um, if you're happy with that, you can hit close. If you maybe think it didn't scan them all, you could hit rescan. Uh, but again, if you're scanning for air, um, you have to have the WineGuard air on. If you're scanning for cable, you want to make sure to turn your wine guard off. So we'll close the screen. And now we've found our channels. When you're done watching TV, obviously you just want to turn it off. And before you travel, you want to make sure that your TV is in the down position or stowed uh, before you travel because you don't want that motion of your coach rocking the TV when it's up. So this love seat does fold out into a bed. The cushions are Velcroed on the back. So you can remove those. There's a lift handle down here in the back. So when you pull the lift handle up, that unlocks it. And now you can grab a hold of this, lift it out. Then fold the seat back down, and there's the bed. Um, when you're ready to stow it back in place, just lift the seat back up and fold it back in place.
We have our theater seating here, um, and there is a storage area uh, with a sliding tray. Uh, cup holders. Uh, the cup holders um, have a color um, once you turn them on. If you want to change that color, when you turn the switch on, the little button, just hold it down when you turn it on, and then it will scroll to different colors. And when you see the color you like, you release the button and it stays on that color. So you, again, just turn it off. When you turn it back on, hold it down when you turn it on, and you can scroll to match the color or choose any color you like. And these are the electric controls for the seat and your footrest. Extend and retract. There's also a USB port here for charging. You can put the TV lift up and down from this position or control the lighting, just like we showed on that panel over there. Uh, you would just hit the home and go to systems and then TV lift up. And when you're finished, then would be TV lift down. Uh, the shades are also controlled from here if you press the shade button. Uh, now it gives you the option of which shades, uh, kitchen, living room, back shade, forward shade, or dinette. So, uh, and also gives you night shades on this side. So if you want to do kitchen, living room, day or night is here. You select, you can see they go up and down. And that's back to our home screen. So moving over into the kitchen area, uh, the dinette here, uh, there's another wall control. And it's the same as that control. You can control all the lighting and other system functions here, along with all the shades. Um, the two chairs that are here uh, can be moved so you can get into the storage compartments here. And there's a, a file cabinet here if you have hanging files. Just underneath the table, you have additional storage here. And these uh, are adjustable. Another drawer here. This is a plug hole that goes down here if you had a printer. Um, access for the printer, you can pull it out here. And then, of course, that plug comes up. There is a additional USB um, charging ports here, along with a 120-volt plug. The table extends out just by grabbing a hold of it and pulling it. And there are two extra chairs underneath the bed in the bedroom. You can just bring those out here for extra seating. So moving over to the refrigerator, it's a three-door refrigerator. You'll notice in between the upper and lower doors, there's a locking mechanism. So right now, all of the doors are locked for travel. Newmar installs this travel latch. So to unlock it, you move it to the right. And now we can open all of the doors. This is the ice tray for the ice maker. There's an ice maker just to the back and up. There's a bail arm on the ice maker, so you can actually just turn the ice maker off by lifting the bail arm up if you don't want any ice to be made. 
Inside the refrigerator, you have a water filter here. The filter is installed right here and it just pushes in place, arrows up, and that will filter your water coming into the refrigerator. There's an additional um, air filter that comes with the refrigerator uh, to keep the uh, air in the refrigerator um, fresh and smelling good. That you can see in the back there is the place that you install those filters. Obviously, when you're ready to travel, you want to make sure and lock the doors again so the doors don't open while you're traveling. To, re to turn the refrigerator on and off or to get water, just put your cup here and press. Uh, that will dispense the water here. Right now, you'll notice it says cooling off. That means the refrigerator's off. To get the refrigerator to come on, you'll notice two small arrows here. If I press and hold those two buttons below the arrows, the refrigerator comes on. Now you'll see here three snowflakes by the freezer temp and then three over here by refrigerator temp. So I can adjust more snowflakes for colder. If I press it again, even more cooling. Now if I press it again, I'm back down to only one snowflake. So I can adjust my temperature in the refrigerator or the freezer the same way. If I'm not using the refrigerator, it's going into storage, I want to turn the refrigerator off. I just press and hold those same two buttons and the refrigerator will go off. Moving over here to the pantry. Um, I have my pantry drawers and additional storage in the bottom. These are locked. You can't open them because you have to press in first. So you press and then you can open. Once I press it back, you can hear it lock into place. So they're all locked, just press it, unlocks it, pull it out. Once you push it back, you'll hear it click and that locks it back into place. The door stays locked by these magnets. There's a magnet just up here on this door. Once you close it, you'll hear it latch. Same with the door here, you have a magnetic lock and additional storage here. So starting on the opposite side of the kitchen here with our microwave, just above the microwave, the extra storage area here, uh, the microwave has actually two door latches. Numar installs this one. If you want to open the door, grab the door here. Opens, you'll see the additional door latches here. Uh, the microwave uh, has parts in here that are taped down uh, taped in place, so you have to remove the tape and then um, make sure that it's plugged in. Right now, there's a cord you can see over here in this compartment. That's the microwave plug. You'll have to plug that in, make sure it's plugged in to operate the microwave. You'll notice a black case here with all your warranty registration information and coach operating manual. Newmar categorizes all of the information into plumbing, heating, air conditioning, exterior, electrical, and appliances. So you'll see your manuals are here. That's your owner's operator's manual. And you'll also see the secondary operating manuals of all your appliances are in this carrying case. So go through your carrying case and make sure that you get all your warranty registration sent in. In addition to that, you have the um, operator's guide uh, for your uh, chassis is here. You'll notice there's additional placards here on the side of the door and back wall. Uh, gives the information on what the colors are, um, also what the VIN number is, and other uh, gross vehicle weights are all listed here with special notices. More storage space there. Working down here, 
Um, again, we have our lighting and our systems control. I can turn my water pump on and off from there or control all my shades. You'll notice these come out and there's a storage area here for the sink covers. has a telescoping sprayer hot and cold adjust here on and off storage and drawer you'll notice there uh, is a set of louvers uh, here in the kitchen and that's for our heating uh, heating uh, discharge area. Drawer for our trash. More sliding drawers here. Um, information on your Fisher Paykel dishwasher is uh, up in the black case that we just talked about. Uh, one thing you want to make sure of before you travel, just like the refrigerator, is you want to make sure that the door is locked. Uh, you can tell just by pulling on it, it is locked. You can see the red lock uh, LED that comes on. If you want to unlock it, just press and hold that. few seconds you'll see that the red light goes out now I can open and close my dishwasher to load it or unload it uh, again getting ready to travel press it again and it's locked unlocked and now it's locked there's an additional storage uh, silverware drawer here. You'll notice inside the drawer are all your controls, your handheld control devices, uh, along with your touch-up paints for your coach colors, sets of keys. You also have your filter wrench for your whole house filter out in the water bay compartment. So the drop ceiling has locks so that you can drop it down and access the filters for your air conditioning rooftop air. So right now they're locked. If you reach up here, you'll feel a small lever, pull the lever down. There's two of them. That unlocks it. You can drop this down. You can see there are discharge in the black. Disc. That's where the, the air drops down through the louvers. If you're running the air conditioning, that's cool air. If you're running heat pump, that'll be hot air. Uh, to clean these filters, which should be done uh, once a month at least, if you're in your coach a lot, you just grab a hold of the filter and pull down. So then you can take the filter off, clean it, and you can hand wash it in soapy water, let it air dry, put it back in place, and then just it clips back up by pushing it up in the same hole that you had it in. So that's, there's four of those. They need to be removed and they need to be cleaned, not only in this front area, but in each one of the zones going back. When you're finished with the cleaning of the filters, then you just push this back up and the, the latch mechanisms will lock in these loops here. At the entrance door in the overhead are your controls for the coach in this area rather than in an overhead near the driver's seat. Uh, starting on the left hand side is your Wi-Fi Ranger router and to turn that router on and off is the switch here. 
Moving over here, uh, this is your awning controls for your exterior awnings. Um, you'll see here you've got your lighting controls, uh, lock and unlock, channels. Uh, the channel 1, 2, and 0. Uh, would, 0 would be controlling all of them at the same time. Channel 1 is just for one awning and 2 is for the, uh, for the other. You've got in, out, and stop. And that's how you control your awnings. Just to the right of that, we touched base on this a little bit earlier. This is your television over the air receiver. So once that's turned on, it will uh, go through a, a circular motion. Um, you can um, see here the lights and the LEDs are searching for channels. Obviously, these will uh, turn the antenna uh, on the roof a little one way or the other. Um, you can press search and it goes through the searching mode. Obviously, we can't pick up anything because we're inside. When you're done with the television and over the air, turn that off. And now I can watch cable. But this has to be off in order for me to get the cable signal. The driver's side window awnings, meaning the small window awnings on the exterior of the coach, are controlled here. Passenger window awning open and close is here. This, of course, is the Wi-Fi router. The en entrance door lock and unlock. You can hear the door locking and unlocking. Baggage door lock and unlock. Uh, the step cover. If you look down, You'll notice there's a cover that extends. You can put this out at any time, and that just gives you extra uh, floor area here near the steps if I'm going to be in the coach and uh, I don't want anything to be going down the steps and I want to have a good platform for walking. I can put that out when I'm done, ready to go out the door. I can just hit my step cover and it will retract. The exterior entry step will stay open if I press this on. Uh, the advantage of that is when I open and close the door, the steps go in and out every time. But if I just want uh, to open or close the door and leave the steps out so they're not always traveling, I can override the steps with my step override switch here. Just to the right of that, you'll see um, a BMS switch that's illuminated. That's what's called our battery management system. Um, if I wanted to turn my battery management system off so there's no house battery power, then I would press this and hold it for a couple seconds and then it will turn the house batteries off like a battery disconnect. If this is off and I want the power to come back on, I can do the same thing here. Turn it on and the batteries will come on. If this is illuminated, the batteries are on and working, I want to also make sure that if this was off while I was operating the coach because I wasn't plugged in and I had to turn this back on, I may be at the 10% charge level. If that happens and you have to turn it back on, make sure you're either plugged in or your generator's on so the house batteries charge. You can refer to your owner's manual for more information on your Lithionics battery system. Just to the right of that, is our leveling system for the coach, our jacks, auto level system, auto store. Uh, these lights will illuminate red when the jacks are down. If at any time I'm in the auto level mode and I press cancel, uh, the whatever function that I was in uh, will be interrupted. There's a master reset for that same 
system, for the HWH system pump, if for some reason my hydraulic steps uh, are not working or functioning, I can use this HWH uh, master reset switch and hold it down for five seconds. There's slide outs um, on the driver and the passenger side. Driver side here, passenger side here. You have to hold the out or the in in order for the slide room to travel or the slide out to travel. Once you release it in either direction that I'm going, uh, the slide out will stop. So you have to hold those down until you get full extension or full retraction. Um, there are exterior LED lights, patio lights, security lights, driver security lights, and rear security lights are all here. Uh, when I turn those on, uh, you'll see the light will illuminate. And press it again, the light goes out. The strip lights here in this area go out when the magnetic switch touches here. Just to the left of that, you'll see that we have our wine guard control, a wine guard control for the satellite. Antenna is here, uh, search and stow, and whatever uh, mode that it's in or going to is displayed here. And that, oh, there is one additional uh, area here where a solar prep panel could be installed. Uh, Numar pre-runs pre the solar wires behind this panel uh, so you can put your controller here and plug into it. At the entrance door um, the, there is a fire extinguisher. Um, obviously to unlock it you would just flip this open uh, lift the fire extinguisher out, pull the pin, and then you just depress this handle here as you're holding this to spray um, at the fire area. There is an indicator here uh, showing the charge. Just behind the entrance door area, you'll see we have your touch panel screen, your silver leaf screen, uh, and that gives your functions of your coach. It gives your uh, displays for your fresh black and gray tank. It shows your house batteries and also shows uh, whether you're on shore or generator power. We'll just go through these um, touch buttons real quick to show you uh, what they show. This one obviously showing your house battery is at 99% state of charge, uh, showing the chassis battery at 12 volts. If the first button is just a dimming switch. Uh, if you wanted to see this in a little dimmer light, you can dim it down or press it again to go back to full brightness. Um, the second one down is AC power, meaning alternating current power. Shows leg one and leg two if you're plugged into your shore. And it tells you what amperage setting you're set to. Also, it tells you what inverters are on and off. So to turn those on or off, you can just press one time and those inverters are turned on. Next button down is the DC power, direct power. This is your battery power. Uh, again, is showing our house batteries at 100% state of charge and they're bulk charging right now. Uh, the next icon is the generator generator. Uh, is showing that it's stopped um, and then it will it will also show the um, auto gen start feature if it's turned on our water is showing fresh black and gray uh, water pump on and off climate is where we adjust our temperatures um, we can uh, use two different functions of heat uh, whether that's the oasis itr uh, that would be the hydronic heat, and that also is the heat for your water. If we go back, we can also do just the, the cooling, uh, and that's our rooftop air conditioners. So those can all be set here. Uh, you can use the all button for all zones, or you can pick the individual zone that you want to set for temperature. If you're in the climate screen 
and you choose Oasis, that's your ITR hydronic heat for your water or your um, heating zones in the coach. There are burners you can turn on and there are electric elements that you can turn on. Just by the press of a button, you can see that I've turned my burner on or I've turned my electric elements both on. You have to choose those to be on uh, in order for them to work. And we recommend that the burner is always on if you're in cold temperatures. Uh, that way, if you needed the heat in the water compartment, it would have enough heat storage in the tank to keep those from freezing. So always have that on in cold weather. There's the block heater. You can turn that on. If you're in cold weather, that preheats the engine. Um, this is the battery state. Uh, what it is currently showing the voltage, state of charge, um, and other uh, temperature information. Uh, there's different modes that you can choose that automatically uh, preset things. There's active camping mode, outdoor unplugged mode, outdoor plugged in mode, or indoor plugged in. So choose the one that you are currently at the state of and that automatically you'll see a check mark pop up that tells you which one if you're in that particular choice is turned on inverters chargers oasis so whichever one i choose that will show me the check mark and that shows me what's actively engaged uh, for that choice there's floor heat front mid and rear um, those you can just turn up or down here or just press and hold and scroll up or down there's your lighting. You can turn your lighting on and off from here. Uh, you can turn your shades on and off. There's your door locks. You can toggle on and off. If you did want to change, let's say, the date or time, you might want to jump into your gear icon and go into clock settings, and you can adjust those up or down. But most of the time, you won't need to go into the gear icon settings unless you um, have someone help direct you from Silverleaf or Numar. And that pretty much covers the touch screen here. The other touch screen is like the ones we looked at earlier. Uh, the controls for your bathroom, bedroom, um, all your lights on and off. Again, if you don't understand how to operate those functions, press the I and that gives that that will go to the information for those particular uh, items and it gives you directions on what those do and what they will control like this one is showing the red button uh, it denotes a selected location the gray buttons denote unselected locations more directions on the fan uh, red denotes the fan is currently in operation and then you can select high, meteor, high, medium, or low for that fan. When you're done with, under, you say you understand everything and you want to get back to the home screen, just press the home button and you jump back to the home screen. Just beside that, there's a temperature sensing device for this zone that we're in. This senses the temperature and then tells the air conditioning or the heating to come on or off. Below that is our vacuum system, our intervac. In the baggage compartment you have your intervac accessory kit. And this is the control handle here. The way it works is as soon as this is plugged in You'll have to remove the sticker here and then plug this in. Now we can turn on the intervac with this button right here. On and off. There is a battery in here. If you need help on what type of battery, how to change it, 
there's a QR code, you can look that up. But the hose and other accessories are all in this kit uh, for floor sweeping or any other type of cleaning you'd like to do with your InterVac system. When you're done with it, just lift up, pull out, and close. Oh, yeah. In addition to the vacuum system, there is a floor sweep uh, that goes into the same vacuuming system. If this is opened, you can sweep dirt here, and that will go into the vacuum that's in the baggage area. And we'll show that later. So you can use manual floor sweep here, or you can plug in your hose and vacuum with the accessory kit. So just above our silver leaf con control panel for the coach, we have a smoke detector. This smoke detector can be tested in the same way that the CO2 tester was tested. You just press, and as long as we hear the tone, that means that the smoke detector is activated and working. If we don't hear the tone, we want to make sure and check the battery. Moving into the half bath area, press the handle, open the door. And if you look straight back into these cabinet doors, this is where you see our electrical panels. There are different kinds of panels. This is the 120 volt breaker box. These are the sub panels. These two panels are for your floor heat. These are 12 volt panels with extra 12 volt fuses. And each one of these is labeled with a tag. So if I'm looking at any one of these breakers, it tells me what they are, what they control. This one's controlling the microwave, refrigerator, bed, bath, basement. That's our inverter two. This breaker box is controlling a main front air conditioner, driver slide out, and passenger slide out. That's our inverter number one. Floor heat two, floor heat one. If these are not green, they may need just to be reset here. These fuses all control a 12 volt type appliance and they're labeled here. So if I'm looking at a 12 volt appliance that's, in, that's not operating, I can look it up here. Each one of these fuses is labeled. If I see here that my basement storage lights are not functioning, then I would look up F9. Go to F9 here, I could pull that F9 fuse, which is F9 is pointing here, so I would check the fuse here. If it needs to be replaced, we have the spare ones right here. So I just choose a fuse that's the same exact size, not larger or smaller, and then replace the fuse. The other controls here um, are labeled uh, on the front here of what they control. There's also relays. All of these are labeled F, meaning they're all fuses in this area here. There are two small ones here labeled F21 and F22. And you'll notice there's a small yellow switch in the center. So if F21 or F22 needs to be reset, you can just press that little yellow switch and reset the power stools for either one of those. Um, all of the labels here tell you what these breakers are for, cooktop, dishwasher, air conditioner, and so forth, washer, dryer, trailer. If any of these are tripped, they will be facing out. So let's say my middle air conditioner wasn't working. That would mean that I would want to come in here and check and make sure that my breaker you know, was over to the left or towards the center. If it's not, I want to just go ahead and reset it to the middle position and then make sure my air conditioner is working at that point. 
So if you have an appliance that's not working, just look it up, check that breaker. If it's tripped, it's typically over to the right. It may not be that far over. It may only be a little bit like that. It still needs to be reset towards the center to reset that appliance. If any one of these breakers needs to be reset, it needs to be moved all the way over to the right and then back towards the center to reset. The shade here uh, is electric. Um, there is a control panel here for the ceiling lights, mirror accent. All of the controls in the bathroom are here. You'll see here there's an extra plug. There's extra storage underneath the sink and a drawer. Uh, the Dometic flush panel. Um, there is two switches here. One is for adding water to the bowl and the other one's for flush. If you get the tank level indicator amber light, that means that your black tank is full and it won't allow you to flush. So you'd have to empty your black tank first and then it would go back to the green LED light and you would be able to flush. Uh, it's just your sink on and off, cold and hot. You have your ventilation fan here with the cover. In the event that you might have to operate it manually, you could just open the switch here. And then you can also close it. There is, if the fan is not working, there is a fuse here that you can check and make sure that fuse is good. There is a red LED indicator. You can see if the fuse is good. If I take the fuse out, the red LED indicator goes out. So as long as I see the red LED indicator, I know my fuse is inserted and that it's good. There's just two clips that hold this in place. Just line the clips up and it attaches back. Okay, so moving into the bedroom, we have our pocket doors uh, to unlock it. It's, it's latched in place right now, so it's not moving. To unlock it, you have to push down either here or here and that unlocks the door. Then we can close it. Once it moves all the way to the left, you'll hear it click or lock back in place. So now the doors uh, don't move, they're locked in place. So to unlock, open them, just push down. And you can hear they're, they're locked into place here. Just above the pocket doors, we have our CO2 detector. Uh, you can do a press to test. Uh, just press here and it'll give you a couple ringtones. Tells you the battery's good. If you don't get the ringtones, you'll have to check the battery and replace it or replace the detector. Just to the side of the doors, we have another zone temperature monitor. Uh, this is for the rear zone. We have nightstands and in behind the nightstand is a, another 120 volt outlet. We have additional storage here of the bed. Uh, another GFCI 120 volt outlet there. We have a touch panel control just like we have on the walls. So if you're laying in bed, you can still operate the functions of the coach from here. Two additional speaker controls here. So those will turn on the speakers back here in the bedroom 
right above the bed on either on both sides. You can turn in turn one or both of them on. More storage here. Uh, that the nightstand on that side has another 120 volt outlet um, and more storage above that. You have both windows here um, have the shades that are 100 or that are 12 volt shades. The bed folds up. Underneath the bed, you've got additional storage, and you'll find the spare din dining room chairs here, folding chairs. If you need to get access for anything underneath, you'll notice there's two holes that are drilled here, uh, and these can be removed, but they're screwed in place. Just above the bed, uh, we talked about this earlier, the filters for the air conditioning will have to be removed at least monthly if you're using the coach often, and those filters need to be cleaned in the same way we showed you in the drop-down ceiling in the front. The levers are here, so I grab a hold of the levers here and here. Now I can get access to my filters here to clean. When I'm done, just push this back up to lock in place. On the opposite side from the bed, you have your controls for the slide out in and out. You have your awning controls, extend and retract. And you have another touch panel that's the same as the other panel we saw at the half bath. It's just a smaller version, but all the icons are the same. We have our hanging clothes closet area here. Uh, there is a decal in here that you probably want to take a quick look at. All of your coach appliances that came when you, when you bought the coach new those models and serial numbers are here. Obviously, if any of those are changed in the future, you might want to make a note and change the model or serial number here if that happens. You'll notice an additional plug here. Um, this is a 120 volt plug that's coming over here to our TV. Just below our hanging Closed cabinet is another audio-visual cabinet you can see here. That's for our Blu-ray and our satellite. Plugs and receivers. More storage here in these drawers. Now if I put this shade up, go to my shades and bedroom, You'll notice behind the shade is my emergency exit window. So if there was an emergency and I had to exit the coach but I couldn't go towards the front, I can open the handle here and I can push this window out. And it says here to avoid damage, window must be closed tight when vehicle is in motion. So obviously, um, if I'm not using this window for ventilation, like here, that's air, fresh air, ventilation. I want to make sure this stays closed when I'm traveling. Above here, we have some extra plugs um, for 120 volt. Moving over to the left are additional drawers below and more hanging space here for clothes. So moving into the rear bath, uh, there's another pocket door. Controls the same as the pocket door at the front of the bedroom. Just push down to unlock. And then as you close it all the way, you'll hear a click and that locks it in place. To unlock, just push down and open it, locks back inside the pocket. And moving into the bathroom, 
and get another closet door here with drawers. These are pushed, pushed to, nope. nope. Move into the drawers, just open and close. You have your safe, additional storage, and those are your lighting controls that behind that panel are all your controls for lighting in the coach. The interior light inside this cabinet goes out when the magnets touch. Beside that, you've got your shower door. Uh, make sure that this is staying in the down or closed position while you travel so that door doesn't open up on you while you're moving down the road. These are magnets that hold it closed. There is a sit down uh, shelf here in the shower. There's your dispensers, your water control, your shower miser. To turn the water to hot and to save water using the aqua miser, go to your touchpad and to go to systems and you'll see this label aqua miser. Now it's turned on. So when that's turned on red, this light comes on. Once this light comes on, that, mean the, that means the aqua miser is on. We want to make sure that this small handle is turned towards recycle so that when we turn the water on, this will eventually go from blue to red. Once it's red, then we want to turn this over to the left so the water starts to flow out. When we're finished with the shower and we turn off the water, we can come back over here to the aquamizer. Just press the button and the light will go out. Just make sure that if you're in the aquamizer mode here that you're not on city water um, otherwise your fresh tank will overflow you can choose on this handle here uh, whether you want the upper or lower uh, shower on the handle or the upper one and then, of course, this is hot or cold. Just above the sink, you've got your dual mirrors, a 120 volt plug. Below the sink, you've got more storage and drawers. To the left of the sink, you have your washer and dryer. The dryer controls here uh, for the time cycle and heat temperature settings. Uh, just a note, if you're going to operate the washing machine, you want to make sure to remove the outside drain cap before operating the washing machine. The outside drain cap is going to allow the water that's ejecting out of the washing machine to go out of the drain and not continue to fill up the gray tank. You don't want the tank to become too full and overfill. Just above these doors is another uh, vent fan. It operates the same way as the vent fan in the half bath. You'll notice the little red LED light reflection. That means that the fuse is good and we can turn it on and off or open it manually if we need to. Just behind the toilet, there's an additional handle here with a lock and unlock. This is another emergency exit door that if we unlock both of them, we can open this door up and we could exit out of the coach from here. If you don't have time to put this up, no big deal. Just grab a hold of this strap, remove the panel, unbutton, or excuse me, just take the Velcro loose here 
these steps will just open and drop down. Now we can escape out of the coach in an emergency. If we exit the coach, we need to put the steps back, just lift them up, and we can fold them back in place and put the strap in. So again, this is the same type of toilet and same type of control that we talked about in the half bath. As long as you see the green LED light, you'll be able to add water to the bowl and flush. If the LED light comes on below the green and the green goes out, that means our black tank is full and we won't be able to flush. To access the engine compartment, there's a latch on both sides. Just grab a hold of the latch, lift up. After you unlatch both sides, just lift. All right. And now you have access to the engine. Uh, just covering some of the basic components you have here is your air intake filter here. Uh, these are your charging ports for your air conditioning system. That's your air conditioning compressor. Um, this is your overflow um, for your engine coolant. Um, if you need to add wiper washer solution, that's here. Just uncap it, add, and then put your cap back on. Uh, moving over to the other side, you have a uh, fuse and relay box here. Um, just if you have an issue with any Freightliner component, Loosen the straps and all of the fuses and relays are here and they're labeled here. So whichever component is um, a question, look up the number and go to that fuse and pull it out and check it. When you're done, just put the strap back in place. Um, we can check our engine oil dipstick is here. If we need to add oil, that's here. Again, this is the, um, the cool or cold minimum uh, for our engine coolant. And our power steering fluid and the lines for cold and warm if we need to add more power steering fluid here. When we're finished, we just push the closed the struts let it down slowly and then we just lock these back in place on both sides All right, so starting here at the front corner and working our way back, we've got our basically our headlights, turn signals, uh, marker lights. Um, it's important to check our tire pressure. Our valve stem is here to check that. Obviously, these are our steps to access the coach when we get in and out. Um, just open the door. There's a, a handle here. Two, two grab handles, one here and here. So just make sure you have a good firm grip on both and then just step up in the coach like this. Um, if you're coming down out of the coach the same way, always make sure that you're, you're grabbing the handle when you're coming down the steps. So these mirrors are adjustable inside for the upper mirror but manual adjust from the outside on this lower mirror door lock and unlock with the key side camera uh, for the passenger side when we turn our signal on that turns this camera on these are locking mechanisms so that when the coach 
uh, slide out is all the way in. This pushes up against the Z trim and that locks the room in place. At the top there, you'll see an awning slide topper cover. That cover uh, is all attached to the fascia so that when the slide out is opened or closed, there is always that fabric that covers the top to protect it from debris and or water or snow. Before you operate that slide out to go in, you want to make sure there's nothing on top of the fabric or underneath that would cause it to catch or bind in the awning or the slide out when it goes in. To operate your Girard awnings, uh, the two main awnings, front and rear, this is your remote control. They can still be operated like we showed you earlier from those white controls at the bottom. But to operate them here, just hit the unlock button here. You'll see zero, that means both. If you change a channel to one or two, you'll get the front or the rear. But if you want to operate both at the same time, just choose zero and then hit out. If someone were inside and turned the key on or released the parking brake, the awnings would stop and retract by themselves. But you always want to check your awnings to make sure they're retracted before you travel. Depending on how far you want them extended, you can press stop or continue all the way out. Once they reach their fully extended position, they'll stop by themselves. If for any reason you extended the awnings and they wouldn't retract and you didn't know if it was a motor issue or a power issue, but you needed to travel, there is a special rod that Gerard includes. The rod is inside your coach equipment <clears throat> and this is inserted on the top of the awning and as you turn that it will retract it manually for either the front or the rear awning. If the awnings are out and it's windy or uh, there's any wind that moves the awning, there, there's a shake sensor in both of the awnings and once it moves enough up and down it will automatically go in by itself so that it doesn't stay out in high winds. Uh, in order for that shake sensor to work you have to have the inverters turned on and the battery disconnect has to be on. So if you're leaving the coach with the awnings open and you want them to retract, if it becomes windy, you have to make sure the battery disconnect is on and your inverters are turned on or the coach is plugged in. So when you're finished with the awnings, you just go into uh, unlock. Zero means both awnings in will retract both. There is an LED light strip that can be turned on on the bottom of both awnings. Just press this light switch and they can both turn on. Or you can do it individually if you're just in channel one and you want it to turn one on or off, you can go to that channel and turn that one on individually. Our first compartment door is a small one. It's just for storage. Uh, it has the interior light that turns on and off here with this switch. It's a magnetic switch. There are some accessories uh, for the towing and uh, 
another airline, additional airline. In our second baggage door back, we've got a Velcro that covers up our HWH pump system, our hydraulics pump, and uh, those actuators are for the steps and slide room. This is the master solenoid. This is the myom. You'll see a red light that's flashing on these uh, that tells you the myoms are powered up. So to access the HWH system, we can pull the slide tray drawer pins out. We can slide it out a little ways here to access it. These solenoids in the back are for your jacks. Uh, you have additional solenoids there for the steps. At the top of the pump, there is a pump run switch uh, right where my hand is in the back in the event that you couldn't get the pump to operate from the inside. We can always come out here and we can turn the pump on manually here uh, and then open the extend or retract solenoids to operate that slide room steps, uh, whichever we need just by doing it manually here with the switch. When we're finished, um, well, yeah, we can also check the fluid level, the tank for the fluid is in the back. You can grab a hold of the cap, unscrew the cap. The dipstick is part of the cap. We can just take the cap off. We can check the fluid here. You can see it's up to the full level. If we need to add, we can just add fluid to the same port that this, that this screws into. We just showed you the dipstick and how to check the fluid, um, but in order to check that fluid level properly, you want to make sure that the jacks are retracted. The four jacks are all retracted, but that the slide outs are extended. Uh, that's because those cylinders are in the all retracted position uh, with the rooms out and the jacks up. And that only applies to the slide outs that are hydraulic, not to the electric ones. This would be electric. If you're having an issue with any of the operations of the pump or pump running, there's additional fuses here uh, that you can pull and check the fuse. And then just replace it if they need to be replaced. When you're finished with servicing, just push the tray back in place. And put the pins back in. So just beside our HWH system is your hydronic heat. It heats your the hydronic system heats the air in your coach if you're on heat. Um, it also heats your water. So make sure that your power is turned on here. If the light is illuminated green, it's on. If it's off, you won't have any light there at all. So in order for you to be able to turn it on from the inside, you have to make sure that that power switch is on here at the outside location. Numar includes, in this bubble wrap, an extra manual control that in the event that the silver leaf controls on the inside weren't coming on or working, you can use this one. There's a plug here at the base and you can plug that in here with, with the extra cord that's supplied in the back and you can operate this manually with that manual control. Obviously this is the blue. Blue is for the cold in, the red is for the hot water coming out and these are uh, zone one and zone two loops that heat uh, the convectors in the coach for your hot air or your furnace. There's a Hobbs meter at the top tells you how many hours are on uh, your system. There's two heating elements in here. 
that will heat the fluid if you're only needing small amounts of hot water. Uh, but if you're running and you need a lot of heat and taking long showers, we recommend that you turn the burner on. If you see any of the lights here on the base, uh, bottom, igniter, flame out, or voltage, if any of those are red, that's a fault and your system needs to be checked. If any one of the upper lights are flashing green, then those need to be checked. Solid green is good, flashing green is needing to be checked, or solid red needs to be checked. In addition to these LED lights, there's LED lights on the silver panel. If you see red LED lights here instead of green, then those would need to be checked as well. In our third baggage door back, we've got our uh, fresh water tank drain. If we open that up, there's a drain underneath and that fresh water uh, will drain out of the fresh tank for winterizing. And of course, this is a pegboard compartment area for tools or storage. In our next compartment back, we've got more storage and we have our splitter um, and we have our, um, our swim control. Over on the left here, we have additional 120 volt outlets and our junction boxes for 120 volt that uh, come here. There's also slide room or slide out uh, adjustment controls here and motor underneath this area. We shouldn't need to get into that unless it needs service. The light on and off switch is just magnetic so when this door closes against there the lights will go out. And there is an additional 12 volt outlet here in the back. So we have our Exterior entertainment center, the key that unlocks it is the gray one. And we have our television and sound bar. The control for that is on the side here. So you can see it's labeled TV off or dash radio. So when we're uh, running the dash radio, we have to go inside and turn it to a uh, setting for house and then our dash radio sound will come out here that's to the right if we want to turn it off just leave it off there in the center position if we're gonna have the sound coming through the TV we want to make sure and have it all the way turned to the left there is a remote for this sound bar inside there's a 120 volt plug here um, or anything else we want to plug on the exterior. So when we're finished in this compartment, we just close it and lock. So we're at the entrance door now, and we're going to look at ways to lock and unlock manually and electronically. So um, obviously you can use the key fob to lock and unlock the entrance door, or you can use the grab handle here with the key code. Uh, we're going to first look at the exterior lock and unlock. This is the deadbolt and this is the Trimark key. You can manually lock or unlock the deadbolt with the one that's labeled Trimark here. Lock and unlock the deadbolt or you can lock and unlock the handle here. Oh, I gotta get the deadbolt yet. There we go. To manually lock and unlock from the inside, this is the deadbolt here, and this is the handle for lock and unlock here. To use the door entrance lock and unlock feature, entry lock, unlock. 
cargo lock and unlock. And then there's the door handle. So if we want to unlock with the door handle, you can set your own code or the preset code from the factory is one, two, three, four, four, one. You can hear it unlock. To unlock both the handle and the baggage compartments, it's one, two, three, four, four, two. And that does both the door and the baggage compartments. We talked about the step override earlier. If I go in the overhead inside, and I turn the step override switch on, when I close the door, the steps will stay open. If I want the steps to close with the door closing, then I have to flip the switch back off. You can set your own security code, your entrance code here. The instructions are in your operator's manual. And Numar recommends that you change the code from the factory code so that only you know what the code is. Um, that just makes so that nobody that comes up to your coach can enter the factory code because all the factory codes are the same. And that way your coach will always stay locked when you lock it until you give out the entrance code to someone else. There's a additional storage compartment here behind the entrance door. We have marker lights. Uh, we have the docking lights here. We have the overhead patio light, camera, both awnings. Our Girard awnings will operate those in a minute. This is an electric slide, just like the one in front of it. This electric slide is operated with electric motor. It locks the same way that the front one does. Locks and unlocks when it, it locks when it's closed. It also has the slide topper above. The slide topper just uh, is connected to the fascia, so when it closes, it automatically closes the fabric as well. Security light. We showed the emergency exit door and how that operates. It has to be unlocked from the inside. In this compartment, we have the intervac. Uh, we have the intervac bag that we need to install before we operate it. The plug for the vacuum is here. That has to be plugged in to operate. On the right side here, you have your slide room controller and both plugs that come down from the 120 volt to the awning controls here for your Girard awnings. The Girard awnings can be operated from this position. If you feel on the bottom of each one of these controls, there's in, out, and the center button is stop. So you can actually open and, can, and you can control the Girard awnings from the outside just by pressing the extend or retract button here. There are extra floor tiles that Numar sends with the coach that are from the same lot number that your tile came out of so that in case you need to replace a tile the color will match. In the last baggage compartment door here, we have our control modules for Silverleaf. Uh, we have a drop T and all of the control modules are labeled. The control modules, when they're um, powered up and working, have ex they have an exterior light that flashes on the side. It's like a uh, pulsing red light that tells you it's powered up. 
in addition to the silver leaf controls here, there's a Trimark control and a button that you can press to reset your Trimark so that you can enter your own code for your entrance door handle. These two long rods are for the manual retraction of the HWH full wall slide on the driver's side of your coach. Refer to your operator's manual on manual retraction of that slide room. That's what these are for. On the back wall here, you've got exterior lights. This grab handle is to open the rear compartment. Once the compartment's open, you'll have extra shelving space area here and exterior light. To close it, just grab a hole and push down. Have our rear view camera here, exterior lights, brake lights, and we'll have these uh, we'll have someone demo these. We'll have these uh, turn on so you can see what they look like when they're in the on position. So to test your lights, you can come up here beside the driver's seat. There's a button here that you can press. And when you press that, the lights will go into a sequence. All the turn signals, headlights, brake lights will all go into a sequence. You can stand on the outside of the coach and watch that sequence happens. So if you stand here and we press the button, you can watch the entire sequence of all the lights coming on and operating. And after you've watched the sequence up here, you can go to the back of the coach, turn that switch back on and watch the sequence in the back of the coach. When you've watched all the lights in sequence and you're making sure that all the bulbs are working and good, then you can turn the switch off. So starting at the driver's side and back of the coach, this baggage compartment has an extra uh, plug here for 50 amp. If you need to plug that into your trailer to get power to your towing or trailer that you're towing, we have our generator compartment here. The generator can be turned on with this switch here and then stopped. Just press and hold the button down to start. And then in the down position is stop. You wanna make sure that your breaker here is turned upwards to be on. Otherwise, if it's in the off position, it won't send power into your coach. So that has to be on. Fluid levels here. Service compartment door is here. Go ahead and take that off. You can check your oil level here. Here's your oil filter. And this is your fluid level for your coolant here. If you need to add right here. When you're done servicing, let's put your door back on. Latching in place. Model and serial number tag are down below. Moving forward, you've got your uh, docking lights here, the muffler for the ONN generator. You got your uh, dual tire axles here. In between the tires, there's a hose storage compartment here for your extra hoses. The water, the water bay is here. The water bay is where you find your water levels, your tanks, and everything that has to do with your um, compartments for filling or emptying water or effluent. Starting on the back wall of this compartment is a small thermostat. This thermostat controls the fan that's back there for heat. So when this reaches 
mid 30s temperature that fan will come on and heat this compartment as long as you've got the Oasis ITR hydronic burner turned on. This is a silver leaf panel. Uh, this gives you the totals on your tanks, fresh black and gray, on the home screen. Uh, there is a dimmer switch here, you can change that. If we go to the water, we can turn our water pump on and off from here or our autofill, we can turn on and off. There's the security lights on both the driver and passenger side that we can turn on and off. And if we wanted to turn on the generator, we could do that as well from this screen. The large white tank over in the corner is the Sanovite where all of the kitchen wastewater drains into. If you're winterizing the coach, you have to make sure and add enough winterizing solution in the kitchen drain so that the pump in the Sanovite comes on and pumps the water and, and out and the antifreeze solution into it and that pumps into the gray tank. So just remember when you're winterizing, you want to make sure you add enough winterizing solution into the kitchen drains so that it fills and exits out of the Sanovite into the gray tank. On the, on the back wall here, you have A and B, um, which are used to winterize. This is winterizing solution in this hose. The winterizing instructions are here. Uh, and if you just read through this process, Open and close this to put into your potable antifreeze solution. That draws up this line when you turn your water pump on. Once you've added the antifreeze solution to all of the uh, water lines inside and turned on all the appliances, including the showers, sinks, or uh, dishwasher um, and washing machine, that winterizes all your appliances, then you would put this back into the position it is now. You can see these are the drains that come into the macerator from your gray tank and your black tank. That macerator has to be turned on for the effluent to come out of this handle. The larger section is usually taken off unless you need an extension onto the smaller one. So once that's removed and or this one for a longer extension that's placed into the sewer drain, there's a handle that has to be pulled here. Once that handle is pulled out or open, then the effluent can go in this tank from either the gray or the black. So again, Insert that after you take off the cap, open this, choose which tank you're going to empty, whether that's the gray or the black, open that, and then turn on your macerator. If for some reason the macerator is not working and you just want to empty it manually, then you would connect a larger hose here through the base here and open this gate valve to empty it manually without needing to turn on the macerator. Once you open this handle, you still need to turn on your gray or black tank valve open to empty that particular tank. So whether you're using the macerator with this line or emptying it manually through here, you still need to open up either the gray or the black tank here. When you're finished, just put the cap back on here and or here and stow your hose back away. If you're going to rinse your gray tank or your black tank, the hose connection would be here. When water goes in, rinses the tank, it drains into that uh, gray or fresh tank and then again it would come out here or here.
So that's your gray tank rinse and black tank rinse. Once you're done with the rinse, you might want to open the gray tank rinse to allow the water that went into those two lines to drain out. There's also a control here for your auto tank fill fresh water, city supply override, or fresh water manual tank fill over right here. So you have to make the selection if you're going to auto, city, or manual fill for your fresh water. The fresh water canister has a filter. The filter needs to be installed. The filter wrench is inside. You just rotate this off. Insert the filter here. Take the plastic off, insert the filter and then retighten it here. All of the fresh water that comes into your fresh water tank goes through the filter first and then into your fresh water tank. To fill your fresh water or have city fill coming into your coach, the connection for that hose is here. You have to remove the cap, connect this to the fresh water city supply and then you'll be able to fill your fresh water tank or just select city supply if you don't want to fill your tank. When you're done with the hose, let's say it's fully extended and you want to retract it, it has electric motor retract here. There are low point drains here. Uh, city water and tank fill connection is here. Of course, the RV Santa Con needs to be turned on when you're emptying your black or gray tanks. That's here. Here's your low point drains, hot and cold, open and closed. So you, if you want the low points closed, you would turn it this way, open. And what that does is it drains all the water out of your hot and cold water lines so that you can winterize the coach. When you're finished, then you would close these off. There is a shower so that you can rinse your hands or rinse any uh, of the other items here in this compartment. After you're done with the rinse, you shut this off. The light automatically goes out when the door is closed and these two switches line up. This light, interior light will go out. You always want to have this door closed during cold weather because if the heat comes on, you obviously want this area to stay warm so you don't have any uh, water lines or tank freeze up. And in the compartment in front of the water bay, we have our shore cord or power cord for our coach. We have our indicator lights here, our red LEDs for our transfer switch. This tells us we're powered up and running. There is an RV power monitor for the automatic transfer switch. We can see here in the uh, readout that we have power on both lines and that the shore is active. So if we're not sure we're getting power, we can look through the little LED window here that we do. We have our cable connection here for our cable. We have a access panel here that has Velcro on both sides. We can remove. Once we remove that panel, we have a readout that shows all of our fuses or breakers. Uh, B is labeled breakers. Those fuses and breakers are all in the back there on that wall. If one of the functions of whether that's radios, uh, uh, hydronic heat, or anything else is not working, you'd go to that location of the fuse, F8, pull the fuse, check it, replace it if needed. 
Our camera control is here. This is our charge bridge solenoid, and this is our house battery disconnect. This disconnects the house batteries uh, when we're going to put it in storage. The shore cord has a power uh, retract motor that's controlled over here on the end of the door. So when we need to store the shore cord, we just press that button and then the cord reel pulls the cord in. And obviously when we're finished uh, looking at or changing a fuse or inspecting, we can put this back. The Velcro strips on the right and the left hand side hold it in place. There's extra storage here. We've got our V-Bus RVC control, our two, our two inverters in the compartment forward. These are junction boxes for our 120 volt. In the next baggage compartment forward, we have our Lithionics batteries and our BMS. The BMS or battery, battery management system is this compart this box here is the control. On the opposite side, there's a blue button, just like the one in your overhead above the door. If for some reason the button in the overhead isn't working, you can come out here and press the button here. It does the same thing. Turns the BMS on and off. These are your two Lithionics batteries. You have your two inverters here. Uh, the LED lights here on the display show AC power in the center and that the inverter is enabled. If it goes into a fault, you'll see a, a third light on the end. If you see a fault, there's a button here on the left side. It says clear fault. You can press that button to try to clear any faults out. The green button here is on and off. If I want to turn the uh, inverter off, I just press that button for a couple seconds and these lights will go out because I've turned the inverter off. There's two additional fans in the door. These fans pull warm air out of this compartment and exit the air out the bottom of the door that goes under the coach. There is some heat gain in this compartment. That's why we have the fans here. These fans will kick on and run in temperatures above 90 degrees. So in the next compartment forward, we have an aluminum cover with a rubber strap that covers our chassis batteries. To access the chassis batteries, just lift up the rubber strap. You can inspect them just by lifting this up or you can actually lift this out and you can inspect the batteries here. Close and put our strap back on for travel. Our next compartment forward is our DEF. And there's a secondary bottle here for our Oasis ITR hydronic fluid. This is for the boiler antifreeze for the hydronics. We have additional or auxiliary air, compressed air line here. We have our diesel fill here. We have our ITR Oasis filter here and a hot water outlet there. There's a switch that's the auxiliary air for the cockpit chairs there. We can turn off and on. Side view camera here, and obviously our full wall slide here. Always remember that before we operate any of our slide in or out, we want to make sure that the gap between the fascia and the Z trim is even all the way around. If our gap is not even on both ends of any of the slides, or if it's touching, we want to make sure and get the coach level before we run the slide room out and make sure that we're aired up.
We talked about the uh, light test switch here, but there's also a power, which is your uh, disconnect for your chassis battery. So if we press this off, you can see the lights go out and we've disconnected our chassis batteries from the coach. Turn it back on and our green light eliminate, uh, illuminates. Again, if you're going into the coach, you wanna make sure and use the grab handles or when you're exiting, always make sure you have a firm grip on those as you exit the coach. There's a warning that talks about that here.